Hi there, it's Rob from On Stage Lighting. Just wanted to put together a screencast uh, following on from uh, our review of Resolume Arena, which is a pre release uh, software review. Um, it's uh, Arena is the kind of uh, the new version of, uh, of Resolume, which is slightly different to Avenue, which is their kind of VJ uh, focused media software. Uh, they've definitely pointed Arena at the um, at the kind of events market and so part of that is the additional capacity to do things like um, some soft edging, some edge blending um, and also to do some complex projection mapping. So following on from the article I just thought I'd show you a bit around the interface uh, because if you're a Lampy who's a bit of a media server uh, person you may not have seen the interface before it might be slightly different to the kind of things that you're used to using. I mentioned in the article how flexible it was, so um, it's it's kind of the the way things are played back. Instead of being um, in folders, uh, folders and media clip numbers and stuff like that, uh, everything kind of goes into these uh, these slots here. So uh, what you're looking at here is there's three layers. The layers are on the horizontal, so there's your three layers there, um, and you drag and drop clips um, into the layers. So I can drag uh, a clip into there now. The layers, you can play individual clips from the layers, so I could, for instance, select this clip here and then that will start playing. You'll see it down here on the output monitor. Um, or you can fire, um, it's like, kind of like playing, playing patience, you can fire them in whole columns. Um, and you can also move things around um, within the columns, so you can kind of, uh, and within the layers, so you can swap places and stuff like that. So the kind of thing that you'd be controlling from a lighting console would be either firing individual clips on specific layers, um, or firing whole columns together. Um, obviously, each layer has an opacity control, so depending on how it uh, blends it in as much as you like, so you can fade it in and out. Um, so that then determines how the uh, different bits of content mix with each other on screen. The other thing about these layers is that this is the kind of layers as you see them. Now, the content of the layers can be bumped up and down, so you can swap uh, whole layers uh, top to bottom, which is kind of um, something uh, you probably wouldn't want to do from the console because it might confuse you. Uh, yeah, I would tend to leave things so that uh, something I, if I had a particular layer favorite, like I had a base layer of all my backgrounds or something, I'd want to leave them at the bottom so I, I'd know what 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 was at the back and what was at, what was at the front. So there's the kind of layers and columns. Obviously, here you have all your transport controls. So each particular layer um, has a you know a forwards, backwards, uh, bounce, and loop, and all that sort of things. Play play to the end, um, and also just up here is is the co overall composition control. So if I just hit pause on the whole to whole composition, you can see the whole output pauses. Um, and also I have here, which is the master opacity, similar to how you would have on any other media server, really, the kind of master fade up, down um, aspect of it. So that's kind of where all the content resides and how you play it. Now, part of the automation on there is that you can get it to automatically go between these columns. So you can get it to bump through the columns over a specific set time. There's also here, interestingly enough, there's a transition setting as well. So you can set the speed of fade. So if I uh, if I go to a, if set that set it to a slightly different fade speed, you can see instead of uh, cutting between uh, uh, particular looks, um, it fades between them. So so that's kind of where your content lives. Underneath here is just um, some tabs. This is particularly my this is my uh, deck which I've called Rob. This is my this is my deck that I'm using at the moment. There's also you can have an additional deck, so I could start a new deck and add content, drag and drop content in from there. There's another one here which is my Quartz Composer one, which has got a lot of Quartz Composer content on it, so I can you know I I can. Um, use uh, diff different bits, different quartz files and stuff like that. Some quite nice snowy ones here. Just solo that up and see if I can get the snowy one to play. So your decks would be kind of maybe I don't know you've made them different different parts of the show or different tracks or something or you you know kind of load up content that was specific to that particular part of the show. So that's kind of the playback area. You can see on the output monitor down here we've got what's happening and in, in the kind of on the going out stage. Uh, there's also a preview down here, so you can preview different bits of content um, and set stuff on them without having it go to the main screen, uh, which is quite useful. So you can do that. Just along here, this is kind of all the properties areas on the different um, elements of what you're working on. So at the moment there, you see I'm on the composition layer. So um, I can. This is this is the whole thing affecting the whole thing.
Now I have um, transform controls on the composition, so I can you know rotate and scale and things like that. Next to it, we have the active current active layer. So again, we have a whole load of transform controls, rotate uh, positions, anchors, all that sort of thing, sort of thing you have on most media servers, um, and that is affects the active layer, which at the moment is layer three, um, and you know you can change the active layer. So that's what that's what this particular tab does. So there's two things there. They're the kind of main ones. A lot of these things are the things you control um, from the console. Um, and over here is the actual clip that you're on at the moment. So that's the particular active clip. Um, and again, all the transformation controls from that. Now, you don't necessarily want to control your transformations on a clip level um, actually from the console. But you, you might want to actually uh, use the transport controls at clip level. So that's the sort of thing you'd run from a lighting desk. Now I mentioned in the article about dragging and dropping stuff. Now you can actually, obviously, you can drag and drop content um, and move it around. You can pick it up and reorder it and stuff like that. You can also drag and drop um, content onto layers, or a con or you can add content to other things. Pick it up out of the um, resource uh, resources area and and drag it into position. You can also drag effects onto a specific thing. So. What I was talking about in the article was how, for instance, on my composition layer here, I could drag and add, subtract color onto the composition, and you can see it's appeared in there. Now, if I had a number of video effects, I could reorder them, so I could pick them up and drag them around. Um, but what I was going to just show you was, of course, what I can do over the whole composition is I can add the red and green and blue elements to the dials we were talking about, and these are the eight dials. Um, and so now, actually, if I was using a console, I would have control. The first three dial controls for the composition fixture would then control the levels of my red and my green and my blue. So, I mean, I'd probably quite like to use that, um, not necessarily at composition level, although I could, but I might use it at layer level. So with layer, again, you've got the same things. You could add a particular effect. You could have uh, red, green, and blue there. You could have a kind of strobe sort of effect or something like that on another one. If I were to add a uh, an effect to this layer, and it's layer one, so let's have a look. Let's just look at it on its own. So that's my layer one. Now what I've got at the moment is I've got this um, effect which I have control over the number of divisions on this particular effect. Now what I could do is I could set that, uh, the divisions, to be to a, uh, go to a particular um, dial and then I can use that dial on the console to move stuff up and down. So it's kind of quite a flexible system. It does mean that you would probably be best off having a plan before you started adding every effect to um, to different... If you were changing dials at, at clip level and you were changing them at layer level and changing at composition level, it might be a bit difficult because normally on a lot of media servers it's very simple. You just set your scale, you just set your red, you, you know, you have all these things. Whereas this, we have um, endless possibilities, but with all those possibilities comes the possibility of it all being a bit too complicated. So, um, so it, it's it's a great little system. I think that it just needs a bit of thought and just some um, kind of a bit of awareness as to what you actually are trying to achieve um, and setting up your show file and possibly changing your fixture personality and your palettes to reflect what it is that you how you want to use this particular piece of software. So that's the uh, that's the effects and the control side of things. I'm just going to pause stuff up a minute. What I was going to show you, the other thing I was going to show you, was um, the output side. So the output side um, is where all of the magic happens in terms of uh, different parts of the image that you're creating uh, going to different things. So what I've got here, for instance, I've got a slice here. Now I could slice up a particular part of the image. I could set the properties up here. Um, and I could create a slice which is just that part of the image, for example. And I could create another slice which is just another part of the image. Now, what you can do is, if you you know you were a bit more accurate with this and you could set them exactly to the screen resolutions you wanted and everything, you can also enable a soft edge so that basically you can join these two projectors, for instance, together. So that's how you affect the um, that's how you affect the the soft edging side of things. It's quite simple. The um, the controls are very simple, but you have some control over the nature of the edging, and you can see it happening there, can't you see? You can just see as I do that, you can see how the edges are starting to blend to each other. 
So that's the very simple way of how you could affect some soft edging. So that's on the input side. On the output side, you have the option to um, basically change your slice shapes and sizes. Um, you, you have the option to map, map them. So you can actually change the mapping. You can change it from perspective, or you can add points to it, or you can drag it around and make it a curve shape or whatever. And what that does is, is that it gives you the option then to map across entire like a, the corner of a box or even an angled screen or a number of angled screens. So what you're doing on the input side is you're slicing up what's going in and on the output side you're taking that and you're sending it to different parts. So you could, you could have these two slices having the same content on them so they could both be the main full screen input or they could be a portion of it which means that you could map your content so that it went round the corners of this cube here. So that's got that's actually it's quite simple but that's quite a, an effective way of doing um some complex mapping and some and some possible um some edge blending so you could do a combination of those so that's quite interesting now just finally what i was just going to say was about the auto dmx mapping um you can actually set the mapping on these things so that you can set up uh, things to be mapped how you want so you can set the dmx channel to, uh, for instance for the master opacity to be whatever channel 1 whatever you like um but the the thing is, is that with within the preferences, there's this a thing they call auto DMX map, which basically sets um, your uh, your DMX channels to a known quantity, which then lines up with uh, available fixture personalities on desks. Um, the Magic U is one I've been using, and the fixture personality for that works. Now I have to tell you that in Arena Four at the moment, the fixture personality doesn't work because they have muddled up the mapping, as I mentioned in the article. But but in uh, Avenue, it definitely works. So it's uh, when they sort that out, it'll be fine. What you uh, what that actually looks like is this thing here, which is the auto map, which shows you the first twenty three channels is, uh, of composition, um, including things like the master opacity and the and six of the dials. You know, we talked about the dials which you could put red, green, blue on, or you could put a strobe on, or you could put something like that. Um, all of these various functions from a video point of view, some of them are audio as well, um, and then each layer and use, uses 32 channels. So the layer again, master, fader, clear, um, you know, bypass, uh, all those sorts of things, play, uh, play mode, all, all that kind of thing, plus the six uh, dashboard dials. So there's the, that's what um, that's what controls the layers and the uh, composition, which is your kind of master layer. Um, so that's how it, it maps out. So if you have a look at that sheet, um, if you get hold of that sheet, if you had to get hold of that sheet, um, you can see what it what it will do um, if you have it in that kind of auto DMX map mode. I say you don't have to have it like that, but I mean there's 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 ways of making your life complicated, and I think making up your own DMX mapping might be might be one of those times. There's things that you would do within the console. There's things that you would do at this level by prepping up all your uh, prepping up your your visuals, but with not very much content and the effects that are available and um, the, the fact that you can use Course Composer and stuff like that. I think you could get quite a lot of different looks out of a very small amount of content um, if you if you were cunning and you used um, you know all of those lampy tricks by whacking up the red and taking down the blue and doing all these all these sorts of things that you can do including adding blurs and stuff and waves to make stuff um, look very different. So I think it's very flexible uh, the only thing I would say at the moment is that it seems like you can't download the uh, the test version of the pre-beta test um, without having some some kind of shop account. Which uh, I mean, I took the plunge and bought the software because um, it was dirt cheap for me and I wanted to get into it. Now, at the moment, it seems like you don't seem to be able to get hold of the Arena Four uh, demo without having that account. You can download. Avenue 3.3, which is kind of shows you all of this, shows you all of what's a possible, um, but doesn't have the advanced output settings because that's basically what Arena is. Arena has these um, mapping and warping capability. So that's a little look round Resolium. Um, I think it could possibly be an in of interest to you if you're using, if you want to use uh, media um, on a kind of a small mid-scale uh, rock and roll shows, corporate events, that kind of thing. Do some sort of visuals and some busking, some visuals along with your lighting, because uh, it's for for the price point it's at and for the function you get, um, it's really quite uh, it's really quite good. Um, so take a look at it if you can. Um, I hope this has been useful and take care, and I'll see you again soon.